Hi everyone, it's Michelle, and we are back with a yes, you are a teacher, the preschooler. All right, so the other day I did school age children, and today we're going to focus on preschoolers. Now, the preschoolers, they are um, about two and three and four years old, and uh, they like to do a lot of activities. Uh, they are gaining independence. They are seeing the school age children uh, have school and they they love it. They love every aspect of it. And this is a wonderful, wonderful time to pull out a lot of those things, uh, puzzles and all types of things. Uh, and that they so they can do school and they just have a ball with it. They're like sponges and they soak up all that information and it's wonderful. And you can teach them how to use that information in their everyday life. And so I'm starting out in my kitchen because what I do is I like to set things up for the children. They can do it themselves um, because I have taught them and they are gaining the independence. But I like to have out um, some things like the tablets with the headphones because a lot of what we do on the tablet is reinforcing what I'm teaching uh, uh, during our scheduled times of reading, our scheduled times of math, things like that. And so they love to do things on the tablet. Uh, I also have a computer as well where I put in uh, some of the uh, CDs and that also helps to reinforce the math, the reading, um, different things like that. Um, anything that we may be doing that I think will will help them in their uh, development. And so you want to kind of limit their screen time uh, when you're in your family uh, child care home. Even if you're homeschooling, you want to limit that because uh, they don't really need a lot of screen time. They like to put their hands on things and um, they like to do a lot of exploring. And so those, that is what I'm going to be showing you um, in a few minutes. But I want to take a look at one of the cubbies. And I have uh, these bins here. And I keep Play-Doh, um, paint tray, paintbrush, different things like that for the children. Uh, crayons. And so they can always go and pull out. Uh, those things as well. I like to also put on my table paint, uh, crayons, big paper, and I do have lots of different uh, paint things for them. And I do have crayons. They can paint with these type of rolling uh, sponges and they love that. So you have all different types of textures and um, things for them to work with. They love, love, love Play-Doh. You can't have enough Play-Doh. Uh, and so you can sit those things out too. And that could be something that um, is on your table or you may have a designated area for painting. Uh, I have an easel and so I put the large paper out on the easel and put the smocks on and the kids just love it. Uh, so you have to be careful when you're putting these things out because uh, even though they are gaining that independence, you still want to teach them that just because the paint looks yummy and it's green or red, they cannot put it in their mouths. All right. And so you also want to really start reinforcing your class rules and just teaching them, um, having those teachable moments, if they should hit or if they should be running in the house. You develop whatever uh, class rules you think are appropriate for your your home <clears throat> or your home daycare. And you can reinforce those things, not by um, yelling at them or anything, but showing them or reinforcing to them the correct way of doing things. And I also have books that I'm going to show you in a few minutes uh, that will help with that. All right, so I'm going to just kind of show you some of the things that I have here for my preschoolers. And I'm going to start here with my puzzles. And I have the three piece puzzles. 
uh, they're not quite ready, some of them, for the larger puzzles. The 10-piece, the uh, five-piece, some of them are, uh, but you want to give the children options. And so this is a great start. And um, I have all types of things like police officer, um, uh, princess, ballerina, all those things that they show interest in. That is what these puzzles are about. Uh, I also have some of the, the smart max. These are magnets. And I love these. They easily stick together. The children can uh, create a lot of things with those. They're always saying, creating shapes. They're always saying, oh, look, look at my giraffe or look at my circle. Or um, it, it's, it's very good to have things like that. And it's also a part of your math. And I have a lot of books. One of the things that uh, you probably saw when I did my tour was that I have tons of books. I may have a hundred or plus books here because I love to reinforce reading. When the children leave me, they are normally reading sight words and they can identify a lot of the words uh, that I have taught them over the years. I used to get them about three, four months old and um, teach them starting in, starting at that young age and up until they're with me until they're about four, uh, three or four years old. And so I like to have different books. I like to have board books, um, books, paper books. Um, I have a National Geographic Kids book. And I have um, another book, The Kids Love Stand Tall. And I also have um, in a, a series, Preschool Prep, which is an excellent, excellent company uh, for teaching the children about letters and shapes and numbers. Um, and like I said, hands-on is wonderful. And so if you'll, you can take a look, this is a flip book. And the children can read it and they can flip and see uh, what A is, what B is, and I love those types of things. I also have a book that we create, and this is my picture book. And the children love to use their scissors at this time and cut out different things. And what I did was I just wrote what, what it was that they put on the paper. And so we read these together, um, and they love it. So you can see trucks, um, some dinner food, a stroller, and these are all things that they may see in their everyday life or things that they may play with or things that they may see you working with, like a stapler. Um, the blocks, we have these as well. And the teddy bear. And the children get really excited. Number one, that they've created it themselves and that they are seeing things that are um, familiar to them. And I also have books uh, that reinforce the class rules. And these books um, would be like Diapers Are Not Forever. And a lot of these books also are helping them to transition from, let's say, potty training to uh, not wearing diapers. Hands are not for hitting. <clears throat> okay, on the go, what we do when we are out, we do travel a lot, we go to the library. Um, and different activities and events. And this just talks about what to do uh, when you're getting ready. It's very good. Noses are not for picking. Uh, this is one the children love. They laugh at it whenever we read it. Um, and because they like to stick their fingers in their noses. That's just the way it is. They're, they're not quite uh, babies anymore and they are growing up. And so a lot of these things we need to help them with reinforce. Calm down time. Teeth are not for biting. Voices are not for yelling um, and sharing time. And they love those. And I also have books in Spanish. This is a Good Night Moon. And I also have this in Spanish. This is our second copy, I believe, because the children love this book. Um, and God Made Friends. Okay. That's another one that they just absolutely love. And I want to 
uh, come back to this book here, Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. This is a favorite. I believe this is our second or third copy of Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. Um, and it's also a board book, which they love. And they they actually know the stories of a lot of these books, and they can read them to you. And so that's always a plus to see. All right, so I also have, um, and I just distribute report cards. I found these at, I believe, Lakeshore, and they have them for two-year-olds, three-year-olds, and four- and five-year-olds. And it's just reinforcing a lot of the skills that I teach uh, in my home daycare. And um, a lot of these have to do with the objectives and the development and learning um, areas that are really important. Uh, social, emotional, physical, cognitive, language, uh, math, and there are some other things with reading. Uh, you will also see this, um, the knob, this, this, the knob puzzle, a cylinder puzzle. It is a Montessori uh, puzzle, and I am not a Montessori daycare, but I do like to implement a lot of Montessori things. I have the the, the pink blocks as well, and I also have, uh, which I'll show um, in a minute, I have the uh, letter tiles, which have sort of the, the uh, sandpaper feel to it um, for those children that need that, that type of a feel for their their toys. And over here I have preschool prep things which I absolutely love and is also instrumental in uh, my preschool program. And they reinforce things through their DVDs uh, with phonics, letters, numbers, shapes, colors. And like I said, I teach the children their sight words. And so these those are little readers that they love to pull out and read. And Leapfrog DVDs are excellent as well. I have Let's Go to School, Letter Factory, Talking Words Factory, and I have a whole host of other Leapfrog things. And that also helps in reinforcing a lot of the things that I teach. <clears throat> the pattern blocks and boards are a good thing to have as well. And you have your um, you have the different blocks and shapes, and the children love to name a lot of the shapes. And we don't do not do uh, square, triangle, circle. We do a lot of these things. Uh, pentagon, uh, trapezoid, diamond, kite, all those things. And you can put these on, and they can create different things. I also have puzzles <clears throat> that help develop motor skills. Uh, and so you'll see, this is a Melissa and Doug puzzle. You'll see different latches and things like that. And when you open it up, it'll show, let's say for this example, four red rabbits. And so they're learning numbers, they're learning colors, <clears throat> and that's really, really important. And I also have a uh, number puzzles. And I have a couple of different number puzzles, but what I have out here are my wooden puzzles. It's very easy for the children to pull out and they can see um, some example as well. So they'll know where it goes. Those that are reading, they may be able to identify the name of the number. Some of them will count the number of uh, whatever picture it is on the puzzle. Ice cream, uh, fish, ladybugs. I also have a number puzzle that is um, sort of kind of like a, a foam or something. It's very soft. And so they can see where they put the number as well. And you want to also have these type of puzzles. They're thick. The children can put their hands on them. Um, and so you're taking them from developing a lot of their, their small motor skills, which are needed for writing, 
um, and doing different things. Uh, I also have uh, some felt puzzles, and this is really cute. I believe I got this back from Target in that dollar section, and that was really helpful. And so they can see that, um, like this is an umbrella, and where does the umbrella go? And they put it uh, with the U. And you may have to help them with that in the beginning, but they will get it after a while. And of course, I have my art. Then we're always doing something creative uh, and some type of craft. And so you want to have those things on hand. And I showed you that in the beginning. And I have other puzzles to put together. Uh, this is an alphabet train. And so... The children learn how to put that puzzle together. They learn what comes first in terms of A, B, and C. I have chalkboard and the magnetic board uh, so that on one side is the magnetic board and they can put the different letters on there. And then if you flip it over, there's the chalkboard. And it comes with uh, eraser, a little tiny eraser, and chalk. And I also have a dry erase boards. Sometimes we sit with our dry erase boards and uh, we're reinforcing a skill or they're drawing. Preschoolers love markers. <laughs> so I have all different color dry erase markers and the children have their own uh, board and they love that they can draw on them they can do whatever they want to do and a lot of times with the preschoolers they are imitating what the school age children are doing or they're going to imitate what you're doing and that actually shows that you're actually you are teaching them something and so that is really that's wonderful and they're very proud of themselves when they do that we also do a lot of charts and so this is one of my math activities, science activities, and I will uh, print out pictures of different things. For this particular one, we talked about transportation, and it happened to be helicopter and airplane because the children were obsessed with these things um, because we have a lot of airplanes and helicopters that fly over. And so why not do a nice activity, have a teachable moment, and reinforce some math and reinforce, reinforce some science, um, and have them do their chart. And they actually wrote these numbers in here themselves with uh, guidance, of course, but after we started counting, they were, when we were outside and they would hear our airplane, they would know that airplane sound they would also know that helicopter sound. Uh, and so that was great. It was amazing doing this with them. I also have other charts that I've done with them. And you don't always have to buy things. I created these button counters to reinforce the numbers for those that can recognize the number, those that can recognize the word, and then those that may need to feel and count uh, those things as well. And I created file folders and my file folders, I just downloaded. Uh, this is a number shapes match. And I download it and just cut out. And so they can play sort of a matching game with their, their file folder. This is a, a little old, I need to, uh, a little worn, I need to uh, redo this file folder. But these become very important as well. So you don't always have to buy stuff. You can create it uh, in your home, especially family child care homes. Um, those that are homeschooling, uh, there's lots of things out there that you can create. I have this art projects book and I fell in love with this when I was teaching my own children here at home. And... This is a part of a series, a curriculum that I bought for my children, um, Abeka, and it gives you instructions on how to create certain things. We created the elephant, 
Um, you may have seen that when I gave you the tour. And we've created the owl, all different types of things. It's really great. And it coincides with um, different days of the month, different special days. A sugar plum tree, a snowman. We've done that activity as well. And then I have some other things that I have purchased. I love Kumon. And so I bought, um, I purchased first book of uppercase letters and numbers. Once they get to that age where they, um, they can write. And this starts out with vertical, horizontal um, things, and then moves on to actual uh, letter creation. I have numbers, and then you can see up here, ages three, four, and five. And so you can see the age group that the book is for. And um, I have Montessori classroom, a guide for that. And this is there, this is for fall. Kumon first book of cutting and I also have first book of mazes things like that they have a whole series of different things that um, that you can use with your children I also love the um, dot to dot book for tiny tots this is really cute uh, the children love to open it it's a right it's a wipe clean book to write and wipe off so you can use your markers. Um, and it even has a little guide for the parents in the back. And I believe the author of this is Roger Pretty, P-R-I-D-D-Y. So I wanna come back over here and talk a little bit about um, curriculum and schedule. because that was that is pretty important for you to establish. Here is my schedule and I've also incorporated diaper changes, potty time, washing hands. And now you, this schedule may go out the door uh, depending on what's going on. You have to follow the children's lead. And a lot of times if we're doing things and if they're just not feeling it, or uh, sometimes they get a little fussy, sometimes they fight. And so I stop everything and we may just spend a lot of our time outside playing. And um, there are a lot, a lot of teachable moments outside as well. And um, so that's something that you may wanna do as well. And as far as curriculum, I started out using GWIZ Education what I like is that they have a yearly outline. And so from September to June, they give you topics and you can go to their website and you can download this for free. Uh, but it is a subscription-based, uh, computer-based curriculum. And so there'll be nothing to be mailed to you or anything. You can download a lot of these things. I believe it's $18.95 per month. You can do a monthly uh, membership or you can do a yearly the price may have changed now but it's excellent and the reason I liked it is because it's specifically for family child care providers um, or homeschooling uh, if you know that family child care does multi cares for multi-age children and so we have a two-year-old a one-year-old three-year-old we may have an infant and school-age children and what this curriculum did was it helped me to organize um, what I was going to teach each day or what I was going to reinforce to the children each day. And they have everything on there. They have the developmental learning skill. They have things for infants to do, toddlers to do, everyone. They even have downloads if you need to print out and create something. And a lot of the materials that you'll need are from around your home. and. That is what I love about that. Um, and a lot of, also what I do is, I teach the children how to play the recorder. It's 
kind of looks like a little flute and they love it. Uh, I will warn you, it's a lot of noise, <laughs> but the children have a lot of fun with it and that's great. And that's my easel. We have a letter of the week flip chart. That is something new. And when you open it up, you'll see a story, um, all types of things to do. It's a write and wipe off uh, flip chart. They love it, number one, because it's big and they can write on it and they can actually see what it is they're doing. All right, so I'm going to take you over here um, because what is important also for preschoolers is for them to develop their independence. And they like to be able to pull things out on their own. And that's another teachable moment where when they're pulling things out, you can teach them how to clean it up and put it back. And so I have a canvas bin here with, uh, this is what I was telling you about with the, the pink letter tiles. And you can see that it has that um, type of rough surface on it. That's a Montessori um, thing. I also have the blue. One is the capital letters and one of the lowest case letters. And I have the number tiles as well. The children love these. And then I have the smaller um, ripe off right. And I have the um, the uh, the felt books where they can, let's say, take the ice cream and put it on the different color, and color ice cream. And they learn all different things. I thought those were very cute. I have the popsicle where you can take your popsicle sticks and put it in the, the color finger puppets. The children love these. Uh, rulers. We are learning how to measure and use a ruler, <clears throat> even, yes, at the preschool age. And these are my different counters. I have animal counters as well as teddy bear counters. And so you see that I have a lot of stuff, um, and all of this was, um, I gathered over time. And a lot of the things that I had in the beginning were um, things I used around my home. And But I really wanted to make sure that I had books. And so that may be your expense um, in the beginning, and then you will build up to what you, um, what you'll be working with. Um, or what you'll have after a certain amount of time. And I also love to show my parents these things as well, because a lot of what I have here, they may buy at home or create at home. And uh, I tell the parents, you are the first teachers and we work together. And so that's really, really important to me and should be important in your family job here. Um, to help parents reinforce what they're doing at home. So this is just a, a sampling of my preschool things. And if you have any questions, you can put it in the comments. You can subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have a lot more videos uh, in relation to this, as well as the business end of childcare. So take care and I will talk to you in the next video about infants and toddlers.